morning Rainbow and Sunshine class. Today we're going to have another story about worms and I was very excited this morning because at the weekend I ordered a book that I wanted to read to you and it's called Yucky Worms and this morning the postman delivered the book to me. So I ran down my stairs and opened up the parcel and I thought I would read it to you straight away because I was so excited. It's a new story we haven't had this story in nursery before and I think when we go back to nursery I'll put it on the book rack so that you can all read it by yourselves. But today I will read it to you and it's called Yucky Worms and it was written by a lady called Vivian French. And it's about a little boy who is in the garden with his grandma and they are digging and finding worms. One day, when I was in Gran's garden, Gran dug up a slimy, slithery, wriggly worm. I love those describing words. They are slimy, slithery, wriggly worm. They're perfect words to describe a worm. Yuck, I said. Throw it away. Throw it away, said Grandma. She looked horrified. Would you throw away one of your friends? You can't be friends with a worm, I said. You can't even tell which end is which. We can now, because we learnt that yesterday, didn't we, when we were reading our information book. Yes, you can. Watch. Gran put the worm down. It gave a kind of squirmy, wiggly movement. And then it disappeared really fast. Pointed end first. As the rounded end vanished, Gran said, there goes its tail. I bent down to look and I could see that it had left a tunnel. Well, where's it gone? I asked. Home, Gran said. It's an earthworm. It lives under the earth. What does the earth here look like? Let's see. This is the top. Does it eat earth too? I wanted to know. Well, it eats tiny, tiny stones and bits of grit, Gran told me. But worms eat other things too. It likes rotting leaves and flowers and fruit and dead insects. And they especially like eating at night time when it's cool. The stones and the grit help to grind everything up in the worm's stomach and then the worm poos it back out again. Gran pointed at the flower bed. Look, can you see? I bent down and I saw these long curly worm made of earth. That's the worm's poo, Gran said. It's called a cast. You know when you recycle things? Well, worms do it too. There's still a lot of goodness left in the things that the worm eats. And when the goodness comes out again as poo, it helps the plants grow, big and strong. And the worms move about under and above the earth and the poo gets spread around the garden and helps all the new plants grow. So it's a kind of fertiliser. It makes all the earth nice and rich so that the new plants can grow. That's why worms are my friends. Gran gave me a thumbs up. It's not just their poo that's good for the plants. The tunnels they dig loosen the soil so the roots can stretch out and the air and the water and the rain go in. Oh, we learned that, didn't we, when we were planting our seeds. So now we can see, look, here's all the burrows on the, underneath the earth. Can you see these green bits coming down here? They are the roots 
how the earthworm has made all these burrows so the water can drain down underneath the soil and then the roots, you remember, they suck the water up to give the water and the goodness to the plants to make them grow stronger. So they are very, very useful. But it's dangerous being a worm, Graham said. I stared at her. Dangerous? She smiled back at me. Lots and lots of animals think worms make the best sort of dinner. Birds love them. And so do moles, badgers, frogs, hedgehogs and foxes. Even some slugs eat worms and human beings slice them with spades and spike them with forks. It's a tough life being a worm. Cutting them in half doesn't hurt them though, Graham said. I said they just turn into two worms and they keep on growing. Graham shook her head. Poor worms. Lots of people think that, but it's not true. She put down her fork. Time for a snack. Gran had tea and I had orange juice. Can I dig up a worm? I asked. Well, if it rains, Gran said, the worms will come up on their own. I took a biscuit. Uh, what if it doesn't rain? Gran winked at me. Ah, well, we'll use the watering can and pretend it's raining. I finished my biscuit and as fast as I could. Can we now trick the worms? I said. Now we're going to pretend it's raining. That's what I suggested you did yesterday, isn't it? You wanted to go dig them for your worms in the garden. Gran went to fill up the watering can and I watered the earth. Then I stood back, but I didn't want the worms chewing my shoes. They only put their heads out, Gran promised, and then it'll be a while before they do. So you're going to have to be very patient if you're going to go and water the soil. They're not going to come up straight away. They'll just poke their head up first and then you'll have to wait a while. Gran was right. I had time to eat two more biscuits before she said, Look! Wow! I said. I could just see the tip of the worm above the earth. Now watch this. Grandma stamped on the ground and the worm disappeared. Did it see you? I asked. Gran shook her head. Worms don't have eyes, but they feel the vibrations. And I thump like this, and they think that it might be a hungry bird landing. And so they think it's danger. So they shoot back underneath the ground to hide so the worms can't eat them. So worms don't have eyes, but they can feel the vibrations, the shaking on the ground when Gran stamped her feet. Gran dug her fork, it's this sort of fork, a gardening fork, into the ground and up came lots of earth and wriggly worms. She picked one up and washed it in the watering can. Mustn't dry it, she said. They can't swim. Gran put the clean worm on some paper and held it near my ear. I could hear a tiny, very, very tiny rustling sound. What's that? Well, they're covered with tiny little bristles and hairs, Gran said, and the bristles and their muscles help the move the noise they can make. Oh, I've got muscles too. 
I bent my arm so Gran could see my muscles. Well, if you've got so many muscles, she said, maybe you'd like to help me plant my sunflower seedlings. Oh, okay, I nodded. And then I thought of something. When I go to school on Monday, I'm going to say that I've got lots of new friends. Good idea, Gran said. Actually, I said, I might not actually say that they are worms. And here's what all his friends got to tell his friends that he's got lots and lots of new friends. But what really were his friends? They were the worms in his garden. That's a lovely story. I'm glad that the postman delivered my book on time this morning and I can share it with you today. So it's called Yucky Worms by Vivian French. And just like I told you yesterday, if you want to go digging out in your garden and you want to see if you can find some worms, what's one of the ways that you can make the worms come to the surface? You need to get your watering can or a bucket with some warm water in it and tip it onto the soil. And then you're going to have to be very patient because they're not going to come up straight away. But you do need to be patient, keep watching the soil and then get a spade or one of those gardening forks like Gran had in the story and dig some soil, turn it over and then wear some gloves and move the soil and hopefully you will find some wiggly worms like the little boy did in his story with his grandma. And if you do, I can send you some of those pictures so that I can get my hands down. Good worm hunting.